Now let's apply that basic debit credit system to transactions. Hopefully you have been introduced to the different ways we affect different accounts with debits and credits to increase and decrease them. I highly recommend you have this little chart on a piece of paper so you have something handy to refer to um, when analyzing the transactions. First transaction, the owner invested $30,000 into the company on the 1st of December. We need to determine what accounts were affected by this transaction. When an owner invests, cash is going up and owner's capital is increasing for the owner investment. The two accounts we need to change are cash, which is an asset, and owner's capital, which is an equity account. In the general journal, we will prepare a journal entry to tell the accounting system that these are the two accounts that need to change. Normally we would put the date here. We're just gonna call this transaction one on date one. Journal entries always list the debits first. Assets need to increase. The cash account needs to increase. To increase cash, we debit it. We will debit cash in the amount of $30,000. Note that this is not there yet, this post reference, because we haven't actually posted the other account that we need to change is owner's capital for the amount of the investment. Owner's capital is increased with a credit, so we will credit owner's capital for $30,000. This journal entry is complete. The account being debited is listed first, followed by the account or accounts being credited, indented to differentiate it from the debits, the total dollar amount of debits, equal the total dollar amount of credits. There is at least one account debited and at least one account credited. It's a good journal entry. This is in the general journal. To actually cause those account balances to change, we need to post the debit and the credit to the appropriate account in the general ledger. We will go to the general ledger, the filing cabinet, pull out the account cash, the general journal tells us we need to debit cash for $30,000. We will post a debit to the cash account. That debit has caused the cash balance to increase because debits increase asset accounts. To indicate that that debit has been posted, we will take the account number where it was posted and post reference it back to the general journal. So this 101 in the post reference column of the journal indicates that debit has now been posted to account 101. Then we go to the next line in the journal. We need to credit owner's capital in the amount of $30,000. We take the credit to the general ledger, find the owner capital account, credit it $30,000. By crediting owner's capital $30,000, we have increased it because credits increase owner's capital. It doesn't show here, but the account number for that account is 307. Thus, we will take the account number back to the general journal into the post reference column to show that that $30,000 has now been posted to the account number 307, which is owner's capital. We have now gone through the full journal entry posting process and caused those two accounts to change as a result of this transaction. Let's try it with another one. The company purchases supplies and pays cash for those supplies. Supplies were purchased. Supplies are increasing. Supplies are an asset. We need to increase supplies. Cash is decreasing because cash was spent. Cash is an asset. We need to decrease it. To prepare a journal entry, we will start with the account being debited. In order to increase the supplies asset account, we need to debit it. Then we follow it with the account being credited. In order to decrease cash, we are going to credit the asset account. 
This journal entry is debiting supplies and crediting cash. One account debited, one account credited. Debits are first, followed by the credits. Total debits equal total credits. Journal entry is complete. Now to cause those two account balances to change, we are going to post the debit and the credit to the appropriate accounts in the general ledger. Supplies is being debited 2500. We find the supplies account in the general ledger. It is account number 126. We are posting a debit of 2500 to that account to increase it. Take the post reference account number back to the general journal to indicate that it has now been posted. Then we go to the next line in the journal. We need to cash credit for 2500. We go to the general ledger, find the cash account in the ledger. It is account number 101. We post the credit of 2500 to cause that account to decrease. That will cause the account balance to go from 30,000, decrease 2,500, down to 27,5. The balance isn't showing here, but that's what it would be after that credit is posted. Take the post reference back to the general journal. We have now posted that journal entry to the general ledger and recorded the effect of that transaction into the accounting system. Next, the company purchases equipment paying $26,000 in cash. The two accounts affected are a decrease to cash and an increase to equipment. Preparing the journal entry, we need to increase equipment. It is an asset. To increase an asset account, we debit it. Our journal entry will list the account being debited first. Equipment debited 26,000. Then we need to decrease cash. Cash is an asset. To decrease cash, we credit it. Indent the account being credited after the debit for the amount of 26,000. Journal entry is complete. At least one account debited, at least one account credited. Debited accounts are listed first, followed by credited accounts indented. Total dollar amount of debits in the entry equal the total amount of credits in the entry. To actually cause these account balances to change, we now post each debit and credit from the entry to the appropriate account in the ledger. Debit equipment for $26,000, increasing it. Take our post reference of the account number back to the general journal. We are going to then credit cash, $26,000 in the general ledger. The cash account is being decreased. We are going to bring the post reference back to the general journal. ABC purchased $7,100 supplies on credit. The two accounts affected, supplies are increasing, and liabilities are also increasing. The company bought on credit, they have not paid for it yet, their liabilities or the amount they owe is increasing. Preparing a journal entry, assets need to be increased, the supplies account, debit the supplies account and asset to increase, liabilities are increasing as well. To increase the liability account, accounts payable, we credit it. Debit the supplies, 7100, credit accounts payable, 7100. One account debited, one account credited. Debits first, followed by indented credits. Total dollar amount of debits equal total dollar amount of credits. To actually cause those account balances to change, we post the debit to the supplies account, causing it to increase. Credit accounts payable, causing it to increase as well. Post reference the account numbers back into the post reference column in the journal, and that transaction is now complete. Those accounts have now been changed as a result of the transaction.
ABC provides $4,200 of consulting services to a client and is immediately paid $4,200 in cash. Cash needs to be increased, so we will debit the cash to increase it. And services were provided, which means the company has earned a revenue. Cash goes up with a debit. Revenues are increased with a credit, so we will credit the revenue to reflect that the company has earned more revenues. Journal entry is complete, following the rules of journal entries. Now we actually cause those account balances to change by posting the debit to the cash account to increase it and the credit to the revenue account to increase it. Post reference the account numbers back into the general journal to complete the posting process. This is done throughout the accounting period as transactions occur. Every time the transaction occurs, an entry is created to enter it into the accounting system. That journal entry from the general journal, each debit and credit is posted to the general ledger to cause account balances to change. After all of those journal entries have been posted to the general ledger, we want to make sure that the trial balance or the general ledger balances agree. They are in balance. We prepare what's called a trial balance, and it's just, think of it as an informal spreadsheet that lists all of the account balances from the general ledger. Here is a list of all the accounts used in the general ledger. The accounts with debit balances, these are their ending balances listed here in the debit column. These are all of the accounts with credit balances and the amount of their balances listed in the credit column. If we total up all of the debit balances in the general ledger and compare it to the total of all of the credit balances in the general ledger, those two totals should equal. If they equal, that means that the accounting system, the general ledger, is in balance. It doesn't mean we didn't make any errors. We could have still made an error in the posting process. It just simply means that the general ledger is in balance.